The world is full of the greatness of God and He wants to share it with us. God delights in giving good gifts to His children. He quietly stands with us as our secret champion and raises the threshold of our abilities. God never asks us to do anything without Him and He has promised that with Him Nothing is impossible. All we need to do is follow his blueprint for success. God does not need great people for great tasks. He only wants obedient people. He gives us the great tasks, and the tasks make us great. God makes his servants equal to the task. God has a job for all of us to do, and if we obey, we succeed. Mm -hmm. Failure is not on God's agenda. Amen. We must believe in success and believe for success. Amen. We read in Joshua 1 verse 8, then you will be prosperous and successful. Mm. Psalm 1 verse 3 says, whatever he does, prospers. Mm. And 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20 states, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Claim God's promises. Mm. We have the same promises as the apostles. Yes. If we live like the apostles, we inherit the tools that go with the job. Wow. What Jesus promised, he fulfills. Mm. Let me summarize this for you. If you do what the apostles did, you will get what the apostles got. You yeah. can claim it. Fair shares for all. Realize God is with us. What kind of God do some people think he really is? He said, certainly I will be with you. And Jesus said, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Yet some people go on begging, struggling, asking him to be with them. Why beg God to do what he said he would always be sure to do? Mm -hmm. One hears prayers in church services. Oh, Lord, be present here today. Come down, O oh Lord, among us. They must have forgotten that Jesus said, where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Charles Spurgeon, preached a famous sermon called The Christian's Only Certainty about Christ's unfailing presence with his people. Mm -hmm. But it is the certainty so many Christians are not certain about. Mm -hmm. 
they travail in prayer and try very hard in case the Lord doesn't turn up. Mm. It doesn't depend on us. God is faithful. Amen. He has never failed anybody who stepped out on his faithfulness and he never will. Testament puts a premium on boldness. Mm. Proverbs shows us that boldness is a quality of righteousness. Mm. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Mm. The solution to fear is not bravery. It is faith in God. Jesus goes right to the heart of the matter in four words. Fear not. Only believe. The Bible word is phobia. Don't have phobia. Have faith. That is why we have Revelation 21.8, which talks about the cowardly, the unbelieving. Their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Unbelief and cowardice go hand in hand. The psalmist knew that the secret was to trust in God. He said, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Daniel had some very frightening experiences, but he said, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Or as some version puts it, they Fight back. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. on God's word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 says, Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it day and night night Amen. so that you may be careful to do everything written in it yes. then you will be prosperous and successful yes. a seaman may know the seas and the charts and the ship but daily he faces new conditions and he must make sure the compass is set right for the next landfall new conditions and challenges arise daily for us all, which could put us off course. And so we must turn to the word for our daily needs. Yes. There is a difference between knowing the Bible and letting it speak to us. We may memorize it, but miss it. I know Psalm 23 by heart like most Christians, but I need constantly to make it my experience. Go to the Bible to hear the voice of God for you today. 
to hear his commands, to catch his thoughts Amen. for you. Churches that will act will grow. Churches that simply sit mm. looking at one another right. and dreaming, waiting for some special day, a revival day, yeah. praying mm. for a different mm. day, will eventually just die of old age. People that have done things to change the world did them when nobody thought it was the right time. Mm. They should have waited for better conditions, but mm -hmm. they acted and changed the conditions. Mm -hmm. That is how revival starts. Somebody thinks they have prayed and waited long enough and gets on with the job right. of preaching the mm -hmm. gospel. Mm -hmm. wow. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not ours. Today is the day. Right, yes, it is. Wisdom. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 says, We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Stumbling blocks are not always grave sins in Christians and preachers, but they are anything that puts people off. Our manna matters. Not only the way we live, but the way we speak of Christ can put people off. Amen. Even small things speak loudly to people in the congregation yes. listening to us. But anywhere, people are easily put off if we are bombastic, mm -hmm. egotistic, yes. bouncy, hostile, critical, mm. arrogant, and pompous. People want God. Mm -hmm. If you lack anointing, a noise won't do. One could fill a book with stumbling blocks. How can you avoid them? By one simple thing. Love. Some can't help their awkward manner, but love will cover it. Genuine love that is not just a mask. Endurance. 2 Corinthians 6 verses 4 to 5 says, As servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger. Paul wants to commend himself. He doesn't do it by boasting of his great miracles and scholarship, but by enduring hardship. Amen. That glorifies the Lord who gives Paul the strength to endure what is not endurable. Yeah. Worn out, he was renewed. At the end of himself, he was at the beginning of God's resources. However, he doesn't mean just endure, which is passive, but persevere, which is active. 
refuse to be daunted. In Acts 20, verse 23, Paul said, I know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me, but none of these things move me. The plowman who looks back plows a crooked furrow. Greatness. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verses 8 to 10 states, Through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, mm -hmm. poor, yet making many rich, mm -hmm. having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Mm -hmm. That is what you can expect if you serve Christ, right. mm -hmm. true yeah. greatness. Mm -hmm. The world sees believers upside down, opposite to what they really are. They are spoken of as imposters, as dying nobodies, as a knocked about and sorrowful lot that has nothing. In fact, these people live to expose the lie to these reports. Amen. No matter what is said about them, these Christians show the real truth by carrying on quietly and humbly. Mm -hmm. God defends them. Greatness, as the world knows, is false. Mm -hmm. The world makes gods with feet of clay. Mm -hmm. Unworthy people are put on pedestals, yes, applauded, admired, loaded mm -hmm. with riches. Yes, but God is raising up a new breed. Yes. Right. The world Amen. does not recognize them. Mm -hmm. yes. They may not even recognize themselves, mm -hmm. but the greatness of God lies yes. within them. Without the fire of the Holy Spirit, our opportunities are limited. We absolutely need that flame from above. Just think of it. Easter had happened. Jesus left the grave. What a mighty happening and glorious occasion. Yet, after the resurrection, the disciples still quarreled with each other and they doubted. But after the day of Pentecost, after they had received that flame from above, it seems to me all quarrels and doubts were burned out. They went forth charging the gates of hell and prevailing against them. The purpose of this glorious flame from above given to you by Jesus is to get you going for God, for your testimony, for your preaching, to bear the fire of the Holy Spirit. You will become effective. You will go out and you will witness and preach and minister for Jesus. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, John the Baptist introduced another Baptist, Jesus the Baptist. John said, I baptize you in water unto repentance, but somebody after me who is greater than I, he is going to baptize you into the Holy Spirit and with fire. John baptized into water, but Jesus, the greater Baptist, 
stands in a river of liquid fire. He puts his arm around you and me and he baptizes us. He immerses us into the fire of the Holy Spirit. Remember, God does not sit with sitters, but he goes with goers and he works with workers. Therefore, you must go. Jesus will lift you out of the deepest pit, but he will not lift you out of a comfortable armchair. You've got to get up yourself. You've got to cry from earth to heaven the way Isaiah did when he said, Here am I, Lord, send me. Now the most holy moment has come. I believe Jesus is there with you. The Holy Spirit has come. You are there. And you are now going to receive the same gift I received so long ago. You receive your flame for your head. If you have an opportunity or chance, just kneel down wherever you are. Lift your hands to heaven. Open your spirit for the Spirit of God. And now Jesus will do and give you this wonderful gift. In the name of Jesus, receive the fire of the Holy Spirit now. The early apostles, or Martin Luther, John Wesley, or George Whitfield, they are all gone. God only has us now, but that is all he needs. The eternal destiny of our generation is in the balance. 
it is up to you.